All right, so this video is going to be the first in a set of videos that works down to a kind of a rudimentary understanding of why nations trade. So that's kind of the entire reason that we're introducing these topics is that we want to start to figure out why is it important to be able to have a global economy and to be able to trade. So this is the this is kind of the whole reason that this isn't that these other two topics, absolute advantage and comparative advantage, are important. So let's take two nations. The U.S., I'll underline that in red, and then Canada, which I'll underline in blue. And actually, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and redo that because Canada's flag is red. And so the U.S. in one year can produce either 30 units of wheat or 15 units of coal. Okay? So the U.S., we're going to draw a production possibilities curve which should be review at this point for the US and I'm mixing up my colors again. So the production possibilities curve for the US is if we put wheat down here and we put coal up here we have 30 or 15. And so I'm just going to assume that it's a straight line. There is no reason that it needs to be a straight line. It, norm it actually most likely would be bowed out like this. But we're just going to keep it simple and keep it a straight line for now so that we can make some kind of rudimentary comparisons without having to do too much math. So then Canada's production possibilities curve, the production possibilities curve for Canada, will look like this. So Canada can produce only five units of wheat if we put wheat down here and we put coal up here, or it can produce 15 units of coal. So that's Canada's production possibilities curve. And that was five right there. So the first question we want to be able to answer is who has the absolute advantage in the production of wheat and the production of coal? And at this point, I haven't even introduced what the concept of absolute advantage means. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So a nation has an absolute, or a nation or a firm or any economic entity really, has an absolute advantage if it can produce more of a good given the same amount of inputs. So in this situation, basically the input we're saying is just time and land. And we're not really comparing the land that Canada uses and the land that the US uses. We're just saying it's all the same. So in one year, in one year, um, the US can make 30 wheat and Canada can only make five. So I'm just going to write Canada can make five. So then the U.S. has the absolute advantage in wheat. So the U.S.A. has the absolute advantage, has the absolute advantage in the production of wheat. And I'm just going to write in wheat. Now, for the production of coal, because the USA can produce 15 units of coal or Canada can produce 15 units of coal, no one has the absolute advantage in the production of coal because they are equal. So no one has the absolute advantage. And really, that's all that there is to say about absolute advantage is it's just who can produce more of a good given the same amount of inputs. And so here the US has an absolute advantage in the production of wheat because 30 is greater than 5 and no one has an absolute advantage, neither the USA nor Canada has an absolute advantage in the production of coal because 15, the USA can produce 15 units of coal in a year and Canada can produce 15 units of coal in a year. Mm. So in the next video we'll talk about comparative advantage and then we'll start talking about terms of trade.